A stranger named Donald Ward climbed in bed behind a young woman who'd fallen asleep in her boyfriend's dorm room at Purdue University. She thought that, her, uh, that he was her boyfriend and he engaged her in sex. He admitted that he had tricked her to the police and they arrested him for rape. The jury acquitted him because in the state of Indiana, in, Midwestern, in the Midwestern United States, rape by fraud or impersonation is not a crime. In the state of Tennessee, it's a felony. In the state of Alabama, it's a misdemeanor. In the state of Delaware, it's not a crime. In the state of Idaho, if he pretends to be your husband, it's a crime, but not if he pretends to be your boyfriend. This example shows how chattel, the concept that your father or your husband owns your chastity and you're their property, is still with us in our laws today. So why is this? Why this confusion? Uh, just down the road, what's legal in one place can be illegal in another. Our laws are based on some pretty bizarre and outdated concepts about consent. In, the, uh, in ancient Rome, rape was only a crime against a, a virgin daughter of a taxpaying citizen because she was her father's chattel. And uh, rape was a crime actually against the father, not, about, uh, not against her. Uh, if uh, she consented, that didn't matter. If he raped a slave, that was no big deal. And that concept survived uh, in the United States all the way through to the end of the Civil War when anti-slavery laws were created. Today, we see slavery as morally shameful because laws shape our morality. And we need new laws on, uh, on uh, sexual assault that can change our morality the same way that anti-slavery laws did. We've come two steps forward in the modern era. The It's On Us pledge says non-consensual sex is a, sex, uh, is a sexual assault. <clears throat> The problem, unfortunately, with this is that that word non-consensual uh, tells us what, uh, it doesn't tell us what consent really means. The, uh, some states have adopted model penal code's consent provision, and it says consent is ineffective if induced by force, duress, or deception. But unfortunately, the word ineffective also tells us what consent is not it doesn't tell us what consent is. So what's your definition of consent? If agreement pops into your mind, uh, you're in good company, that's what most people think. But there are many different types of agreement that can take place in sex, but only consent has the weight to make uh, sexual conduct legal. What distinguishes consent is that it's freely given, knowledgeable, and informed agreement. In our social media world, I like to call that uh, hashtag FGKIA for freely given, knowledgeable, and informed agreement. Another type of agreement that often gets confused for consent is assent. And assent means uh, agreement on the face of it. Larry Nasser, the doctor for the US women's uh, gymnastics team, pretended that he was medically treating his patients when he uh, touched their private parts for his sexual pleasure. His patients can only assent because they weren't knowledgeable and informed. In sexual conduct, uh, we have a name in legal language for tricking a person into thinking yes when their real interest is no. 
When you trick them about the action itself, it's called fraud in the factum. When you, treat, uh, when you trick them about the actor, it's called fraud in the inducement. So Larry Nasser uh, committed sexual assault by fraud in the factum, and Donald Ward at Purdue University committed sexual assault by fraud in the inducement. Another type, of, uh, another type of agreement that people confuse with, uh, with consent is acquiescence. And acquiescence means agreement under duress. Harvey Weinstein uh, was a very powerful producer. And the people who, uh, and when he uh, exposed himself and uh, demanded sexual favors, the people who he, uh, he preyed on, uh, they were concerned about their careers and uh, they were in fear of what he could do to eliminate their career. When someone induces sex through fear, uh, that person is not freely giving their agreement. Also, when somebody muddles your brains with drugs or alcohol, uh, you don't have the clarity of mind in order to be able to freely give knowledgeable and informed agreement. So I've been talking to you about laws and definitions. I've studied this for a long time because, uh, you see, when I was younger, I was sexually assaulted. And I was sexually assaulted by force, by duress, and by deception. When I was 15, uh, my mother went away for the weekend. And my father turned to me and said, now that mom's away, I need somebody to snuggle with me tonight. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to love to jump in bed with my parents. And I'd feel you know, loved and comforted uh, to cuddle with them. But you see, I wasn't a little girl anymore. I was 15 years old. So I did what I normally would do when I didn't want to obey my father. I simply ignored him and hoped that he would forget. So I went to bed in my own room, and I fell asleep. He came into my room. He shook my shoulder to wake me up, and he said, come with me. I followed him. I uh, got under the covers, and I went back to sleep in the middle of the night. I woke up because I felt his arm fastening around my waist and holding me tight. And his right hand was groping my breast. I was stunned. I froze. When he let me go, I ran down to the bathroom. I jumped into the shower, and I curled up into the tiniest little ball that I could make of myself and just waited for the water to wash away the dirtiness that I felt all the way to the core of my being. And I cried. Today, I understand that that sense of dirtiness is called defilement. And it undermines how you value yourself and how you see yourself in the world around you. So did I assent? No, I agreed to go with him, but I had no idea what he was going to do. And did I acquiesce? I froze. But did I freely give him knowledgeable and informed agreement? When I was 18, I was a student at the University of Georgia. And I was going out with a fellow who was a senior. I knew he wasn't my forever guy, even though we had a lot of fun. Uh, so we had to talk about sex. And I told him, touch nothing below my waist. I drew the line. One night, I felt his fingers going into my panties. I said, no. I yelled, stop. And I tried to break away from him. But he was much stronger than I was. And he pinned my arms behind me. He wedged his legs between mine, and he penetrated me. 
Did I assent? I had agreed to some of his actions, but not all of them. And did I acquiesce? You know, after I tried to break away and I realized I couldn't, I froze. Today I understand that uh, sometimes uh, people react by simply freezing. Your brain goes into autopilot in order to protect you to the best way that it possibly can. And no one should ever stand in judgment over how you behave when you're sexually assaulted. When I was 24, I met a man who I thought was the love of my life. He was tall, dark, and drop-dead gorgeous. He was 32. He was divorced. He had a bachelor's degree from NYU in accounting. And uh, he had fought for our country in Vietnam. I felt head over heels in love with him as we dated over the next year and a half. And we were talking about marriage. One night, he called me up and said, honey, I have something to tell you. I'm married. Not only was he married, <laughs> he was 26, not 32. He wasn't my religion, which was a big deal to me. Uh, he didn't have a bachelor's degree in accounting. In fact, he was a high school dropout. And he hadn't fought in Vietnam. He had fled the country to avoid the draft. So did I assent? You know, I assented based on all of the information that he gave me. So on the face of it, I agreed. But he was a complete stranger to me. So did I freely give him knowledgeable and informed agreement? Today, I understand that when someone undermines your self-determination over your body by any means, by force, by duress, or by deception, they're not seducing you. They're sexually assaulting you. You know, a lot of times people say, whoa, wait a minute. You know, rape, violent rape, and sexual assault by someone you know, that's not the same thing. But here's how it all relates. Violent rape is the most heinous form of sexual assault. Violent rape and all violent crimes are considered aggravated crimes under the law. And there are violent crimes and there are nonviolent crimes. And crimes can take place both ways. For example, when someone steals your money by beating you up, that's a violent crime. And they're punished much more harshly than a person that might pry open your school locker or somebody that says, hey, I'm going to the restaurant. If you give me $10, I'll go get you a burger and fries when they have absolutely no interest in uh, actually coming back with your, uh, with your lunch. Stealing takes your property. Sexual assault defiles you. Justice heals. And anyone who's sexually assaulted, whether it be through violence from a stranger or, uh, or a sexual assault from someone you know and trust, whether it be through force, duress, or deception, that victim deserves the healing and the validation that justice provides. Me Too and Time's Up have focused a glaring light on sexual assault, but we need a solution. And defining the meaning of consent in our laws is that solution. The very first question the jurors in the Bill Cosby case asked the judge was, what's the meaning of consent? And because there's no definition of consent in Pennsylvania's laws, all he could say was, use your common sense. Do you think that a sexual predator 
should be able to use their common sense? Or do you think that there should be a specific definition of consent that guides their behavior and holds them accountable? If you, your children, if you believe that you, your children, and your children's children have the right to determine who you're going to have sex with and what type of sexual conduct that you're going to engage in, then you can help. You can contact your legislator and say, I want you to sign this language into law. Non-consensual sex is sexual assault, and consent is freely given, knowledgeable, and informed agreement. As I was struggling to recover from defilement, I often would turn to writing poetry because it helped me to express my pain. And it helped me find my path out of that deep, dark, and lonely place back into the light. I've written a poem for you that I'd like to share with you. I call it My Consent. My body's not a token, not a prize. Don't defile me with coercion, force, or lies. My body's not yours to take, it's mine to give. My body's not your entitlement, it's where I live. Don't think consent's a privilege, it's a must. No matter how intensely you feel lust. F-G-K-I-A. Keep your rape mentality away. F-G-K-I-A, sign it into law today. Freely given, knowledgeable, and informed agreement. So please, call your legislator. Tell them, F-G-K-I-A, sign it into law today. Use your voice to make the world a safer place. Thank you. Thank you.